Lions Den, powered by KCB Bank. First in the den are two entrepreneurs looking to take their one-stop shop for online healthcare services to the next level. Hi, my name is Tanvi Shah. Hello Lions, my name is Nirav Shah. From afar, the healthcare industry in Kenya seems as though it's running smoothly until you're faced with the devastating news of an illness. Which doctor should I go and see? Where can I get their contacts from? Where are they located? How much do they charge per consultation? Will my insurance cover this? This is where the pill shop story begins. Booking the appointment, waiting at the doctor's office for hours before being seen, waiting at the pharmacy for ages, getting some of the medication, some weren't even available. This is where I introduced you, the pill shop, your one-stop health shop where you can access doctors and pharmacies online. Okay, so you're a patient and so you go on the pill shop site, sign up just like you would on Facebook, put your profile. And then once, once you're looking for a doctor, say a cardiologist or a physician, you go onto the website, search for the cardiologist, see if there's one near you, or you can see with the, with the best reviews, who's the best. Go on his profile and his appointment schedule was, will be there. Click on the appointment, you get a confirmation, the doctor gets a confirmation, and you're ready to go. So we charge the doctor 50 shillings for every appointment that is booked through the portal. In Kenya, there are a total of 5,700 doctors at the moment. In our first year, we only want to target 500 doctors. At 500 doctors and 10 appointments a day, that's 5,000 appointments a day, equating to a re daily revenue of 250,000 shillings or 75 million annually. In our second and third year, we want to reach this target to 1,500 doctors and add the pharmacies, which is uh, phase two, and add the insurance companies, which is phase three, completing the whole ecosystem. I would like to ask for a 5 million Kenyan shilling stake for 10% equity stake. Your re year one revenue um, is projected at 75 million. 75 million, that's at 500 doctors. And what would be the, the profit on that, roughly? Uh, 50%. Net? Correct. Hi. Talk to me about two things. One is um, lots of people make appointments and don't show. Yes. So how do you deal with that? Because you charge per appointment and also issues around privacy or how does it work as a user? We, can, we are able to tell using the secretary module and our back, back end who attends the appointments and who doesn't. If a patient doesn't books an appointment and doesn't attend two appointments in a month, they're not allowed to book appointments using our system anymore. But that won't stop you going. I mean, lots of people just show up at doctor's offices yes. even without appointments. So this is... Um, it's a booking appointment system that we're also selling to the doctors. So if somebody calls to book an appointment, because some people call still to book the appointment, if the secretary enters them into our system, that 50 shillings charge will be automatically charged to them. If somebody So even if in, they didn't come through your site? Yes. Remember, we're giving the doctor a full system, meaning his patient's data can be stored in there, the photographs of the patient, the last record, when he has to come uh, for, his next, uh, for his next appointment can be rescheduled and automated reminders. So all this just for 50 shillings. Every time you're going to go to a doctor's appointment, first you need to call the doctor, ask the secretary which times are available, the secretary tells you, like, like we had our thing, and then she had to call me back, says, you know, he's available Monday or Tuesday, are you available on those days? Well, then I have to call back the secretary and confirm again. All this was actually a kind of a pain, which we want to make it easy. I see the value in the system. I'm struggling with the way you're going to be billing for it. So if you're selling it as a system where they're going to manage a lot of their workflows and various, you know, um, information that needs to come in and out, almost like a mini sort of, ERP system in a way for the doctors. I, I get that, but if you, you know, people make appointments, change appointments. There's 50 shillings per appointment. To me, right. seems like a very strange but, but way But that to charges to the, the doctor, the doctor yeah. not the patient. Yeah, but you want the doctors, the doctors have to be on board for this to work. The entrepreneurs clearly have a great idea, but is there enough value in their approach to billing for the service? I mean, is there, could there be a monthly charge instead of... It's asking what's the other monetization yeah. model you have for this. The concept yeah. is great. I deal with doctors a lot, so Correct. I know the convenience or inconvenience, but actually I'm probably one of those who shows up and just demands to be seen. Yeah. Yeah. So you uh, did think about... Mess the, up other people's calendars, but... Correct. The, 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 I, I see you saying, okay, don't charge the patient, charge the doctor, because the convenience of the ERP system is on the doctor's side. How else could you charge for this service? Okay, so 
when, when a patient doesn't show up, um, the doctor will basically either have to come up or we have to, we have to say that we're going to, you know, three appointments and then we're going to cancel off this patient off the list because, you know, you can't keep booking an appointment and not going. Uh, hi guys. Uh, uh, yeah, my concern being you want to have at least to appoint a thousand doctors on a platform. Correct. Um, so question is how do you vet these doctors and what happens also in case, um, based on your reference, I go to a doctor and I'm, I'm, there's some kind of malpractice, who takes the blame for that? Uh, so for the last bit, the doctor would take the blame for that. We've got terms and conditions on our website. We also have doctor's contracts that we sign with them. Obviously if a patient is Going, goes through our system but sees them and they're not happy with something or there's a complaint, that complaint goes directly to the doctor. We've gone to the doctors and dental board, we've got their approval for our platform. Um, so each doctor who registers on our system, they have a registration number. For me, the risk of being referred to a doctor by a platform and something goes wrong, I'll blame the platform, not the doctor, right? Um, it's a, as I say, similar way to Uber, uh, where we are just connecting patient to a doctor and connecting the patient to the pharmacy. We are not liable to, uh, for the doctor or for the pharmacy. They are liable for themselves. I think if something happened to me on an Uber. Correct. And they sent the wrong cab to me, I'd blame them. Correct. Right? Not the cab guy. Correct. So that's, 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 that's my point that's precisely. Right. Five million yes. to recruit 500 doctors Correct. is about 10,000 shillings right. per acquisition per doctor. Why is your cost of acquisition so, so we high? want to get the, the sales salespeople for in the five million. We want to get them each tabs. Training as well. And of course adding to the social media marketing as well. Okay, and then um, you project ten appointments per day per doctor. So what's the average number of appointments it's around a doctor? Fifteen. Fifteen to twenty so appointments you depending to take, on the doctor. So you expect to take over fifty percent of the doctor's appointments through your platform? Well, if the doctor has signed up, we want to take 100% of the doctor's appointment because we don't want them to use uh, a, a digital system and uh, you know, a non-digital system. The, the challenge with doctors in Nairobi is they tell you to come at 11 o'clock and you go at 11 o'clock and you know how you'd expect that they're sitting waiting for you at 11 o'clock and there's still 10 other people to be seen. Is that going to change with your system and how would that change? Through our surveys, we realise that doctors overbook because a lot of the patients don't attend. So this way, we're trying to, you know, tell the doctors that, look, well, somebody's book, whoever books through our system will attend the appointment. So that way they don't overbook. That was but if someone books through, so for example, let's say um, you go to Dr. Dashan here. So you have Dr. Dashan and his secretary is using your system. And then Chris books five times, doesn't show up. Then now Chris is blacklisted from booking through the system. But Dr. Dashan wants to make money because every time he sees Chris, just to see Chris, he, he's, he charges Chris 5,000 shillings. So how do you justify blacklisting a customer from his, from his customer database? It's not a permanent, it's not a permanent. You get, you get my question. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. It's not a permanent that once we blacklist, I mean, before we blacklist somebody, there's a warning letter, that, an email that goes out. We're trying to aim from people like spammers or not just, you know, booking appointments all over the place. So once an appointment is attended, you get an email with, uh, review systems. Obviously, if you've had a difficulty and you weren't able to attend, we can't just blacklist you for that. So I think, you're, I think you've identified a lot of issues, real issues, real needs that are out there. Um, my challenge is that I don't know that the solutions are so simple. Customers are still going to keep changing appointments and, and, and doctors won't want to blacklist them. I think you might struggle. It won't be as straightforward getting all these doctors to sign up. And I, I really don't think the way in which you want to bill um, will be that appealing to doctors. I just, I think it's addressing real needs, but I'm not convinced that you've thought through all the behavior change and the reasons for that reason. At this point, I'm out, but I, ho I hope you do something with it. Who created the system? We have a, our, one of our shareholders. He's in India. He's the one who created it. And he's a system developer. So there's two systems. There's the front end, then the doctors the get a back end. Right. Okay. How much money have you guys put in already to this to this concept or developing it? Yeah. So we put in we have put in five million shillings. Uh, we're putting five million shillings cash and five million shillings equivalent worth is uh, one of the founders that's basically sweat equity for the website. All right, guys, um, I love the idea. It's the, oh, e, this whole e-health space. I think is growing very rapidly. Um, but what I see is a challenge, especially from doctors, 
who don't want to be held accountable. You know, they'd rather do a piece of paper and move things about than say, I was booked for 11 and I came to 11 and where's my booking? So I, I've, it's happened to me before you book and it's shifted and it's moved by 48 hours. You can't claim, you have no claim against it. What I'd say is maybe focus on just first one thing at a time and then move to the next phase. Yeah, you've got phase one, two, three, but your phase one has got another six phases within it, you see? Um, so um, I'd need more time to get into, into this kind of, uh, of, of project. So that's for that reason, I'm out. And the idea is very noble, it's great, um, there's a clear need for what you guys are doing, without a doubt. I would recommend that you at least get, get, get going with the platform um, and then look at where is the traction coming. Tweak it and I think you know, you'll really have a much clearer business plan in terms of exactly where you want to take the shop, what the pipeline uh, looks like and exactly where is the business headed. For that reason I'm going to say I'm out. Thank you. So guys, um... I think if you'd had traction on the pill shop by itself, that alone is wow. Because it's uh, sometimes it's just an issue of convenience, being able to order it online, have it delivered. Sometimes an issue of price comparisons between pharmacies. Other times it's an issue of availability of a particular drug. And I think that by itself is a model and strategic or there's enough pain in the, in the market to solve uh, successfully over there. On the back end, health management system, I happen to, I believe I have some of the contacts and the access that you need to do the back end in terms of collaboration with the government and the rest I could help with. But from an investment point of view right now, I'm out. Thank you. Um, so I'm interested. Um, like Chris said, the pill shop, what you've, what you've brought out is something very different, which I think has legs of its own. I'm from a family of doctors, family of pharmacists, uh, so sort of I've been in that space for quite some time as an outsider looking in. So I think there's a lot of work to go into it to refine the delivery of it and how it's going to be communicated to both doctors and to the public. So I'll make you an offer for the five million that you're asking for, for 30 percent of the business. Okay. Can we take a minute to think? Okay, that's a little bit on the higher side. Um, the last offer that we can give is uh, five, five million for uh, 12, 12 percent. For 12 percent? Correct. Okay. I think we could do the least I could do, just because you said there's a couple of others is 20 percent. 12.5 won't really, you know, you for attention. Remember, at the end of the day, you could have a product, but if it doesn't hit market, then. Let's do that 15. No, 20 is good. <laughs> All right, we've got a deal. Now the good thing is, especially if the programmers are in-house, then things can be tweaked and worked out. Actually, we're a group of friends, and that was the reason for the, for the it being in India. Lion's Den, powered by KCB Bank.